Hello everyone, I'm Bartolo for Gallic Teachers and we are producing a series of workshops about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. If you want to watch them and uh, get certified for your training, please visit us at gallicteachers.com. Our guest for today is one of the most respected trainers in the EC industry, and I'm fortunate enough to consider him a colleague. In fact, he is one of the authors of uh, our workshops. And if you have been in the EC industry for a while, it's very likely that you already know him. Tom, thank you for being with us. My first question is for the newly qualified teachers. We finished our TEFL course. We took our qualification. Gallery Teachers has an internship program to get uh, practical experience teaching online. But let's say that we have studied with another company. Now we have our qualification, but no practical experience. So what's next? Um, how do we find the job? I think the first step when we qualify as teachers is to make sure that we teach, which sounds very stupid, but it's very easy to get the qualification and then life gets in the way and you're doing other things and suddenly it's two years ago that you did the qualification, you're not sure if you can still teach, if you've got the confidence. So I always say, first tip, get out and teach. And that could be um, getting out there in terms of going to a job for one, you know, one year or longer, um, or it could be doing a short course. So what I always think is really great is doing, for example, a summer course, um, where you go and you teach for sort of six, eight weeks, and it's a really great place to kind of cut your teeth because it's very intensive um, and if you make a mistake you're not there for one year you're only there for six weeks so it's okay even better the students that come along normally only stay for about two weeks so if you make some terrible error two weeks later they're gone and you get a new lot so it's kind of all right so it's a great place to learn and cut your teeth and make mistakes um, it's also a lot of fun you know i mean i sort of grew up professionally working in summer schools and i love it so I'd always recommend starting with a summer school. And there's always quite a nice atmosphere as well in terms of people trying to help out and people trying to make it work. Are there any paid jobs where the competition is lower and uh, it's uh, easier to access because uh, maybe they are overlooked? Um, there are a lot of jobs you can do where you just can um, get in and have access to students in, in one context or another, which may not be high paying jobs, may not be what you ultimately want to do with your qualification, but again, they're a really great place to kind of cut your teeth, to kind of get your, get your, your feet on the ground. And, you know, whatever you get paid is a lot better than nothing, I always feel. I mean, I'm one of those people who's always pathetically grateful to have a job. So, <laughs> um, but there are situations and there are vacancies out there, particularly online, for teachers who will do, for example, part of, coursework for students or coursework with students uh, don't pay huge amounts of money but they're a really good source of experience and kind of mentoring that kind of stuff as well which is not teaching obviously and yet it does give you that experience of being in front of people and being with people and helping them uh, access education. Do you think there are specific areas where TEFL teachers are currently on demand and uh, when is the best time to apply? The good news is that TEFL teachers are always in demand. The bad news is that when you start in the year will be the kind of atmosphere that you walk into because a lot of teaching jobs start predictably in September uh, when the new term and the new academic year starts in most of the world. The, that's great and if you get a job that starts in September and you can afford to start in September that's fantastic. If you are you know starting to look for work in January, December um, there will be work. The problem will often be that you will be walk into shoes that may have already been stamped in. Do you know what I mean? So you're taking on a job that somebody has had a problem and had to leave. So you might be going into a school or a company that are very wary, that are very concerned because they just have their fingers burnt by taking somebody on and having problems with them. So um, that can be something kind of extra you have to work past when you start the job. So I think that's always worth having a look at. Um, you know, cleanly you start September, you finish sort of June, um, then you do a summer school and then you spend a month uh, with your mum. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, I always used to do that, like I'd, I'd kind of go away for the year to somewhere exotic and exciting, come back and do a summer school and then spend a month kind of resting um, with my parents and my family, uh, which was great, and then go off to another country and do exciting things. So, um, 
yeah, September to June, summer school, at home with mum. That's my uh, top tip. Speaking about exotic places, I've seen adverts on YouTube where they claim they became millionaires and they speak from their villa with a swimming pool. Truth be told, I'm working from home and I have a swimming pool right on my courtyard. But this is because I'm currently based in uh, Tenerife, Spain. And uh, here having a private swimming pool is the norm. Generally speaking, I don't know so many millionaires that became rich by teaching English. So what are we doing wrong? Um, yeah, there are videos online that give you this great picture of teaching and being millionaires and living on these fantastic islands and a life of surfing and paragliding. Uh, the reality is often very different. Um, you can get uh, well-paid teaching jobs. They are often uh, hard work and not a great deal of fun. Um, and also there is the thing of recruiting teachers from places and then taking them to places that are very different, which often do involve um, paying, you know, it's, it's a weird thing because if you go to rich countries, you'll get paid more. And if you go to poor countries, you'll get paid less. Um, if you go to countries that are judged as being difficult to live in, uh, for example, some Middle Eastern countries where, for example, alcohol is banned, and a lot of Westerners and North European, North Americans struggle with that, um, then those countries tend to pay quite a lot. But if you go to countries that are doing more of the, you know, more of the kind of work where you're living out in very rural surroundings, in possibly rural communities, and it's it's a very poor country, you often find you're paid very, you know, far less, which is bizarre, and you know that's kind of how the world works, and that's the system we're in. But that is sometimes the kind of slightly glorified travelling rather than actually teaching. Um, and the qualifications people want are often significantly less. Um, that's kind of changing and people are understanding the fact that getting somebody from a country that speaks a language is no guarantee the person can teach. And that's why qualifications are important. And that's part of what we've done with Gallery Teachers, really. Um, if you check the links below, our qualifications are about making sure that you as a teacher do know what you're actually doing and do know what you're getting into. So how much should we expect to be paid? Um, the question of pay in teaching jobs is really interesting because there is a real spectrum because some companies will charge customers uh, a very different amount of money to what you actually get paid, which is kind of normal in terms of overheads, but also people often pay what they can get away with paying. So if you will work for $4 an hour, people will pay you $4 an hour. If you demand $50 an hour, you might get less work, but if it's at $50 an hour, you don't need as much of it. So that's a kind of point there. Uh, gallery Teachers is currently hiring, which is good news. Uh, we've got a huge raft of people coming in and doing webinars and teaching, uh, training CPD for teachers. Those people obviously need the right qualifications and need to be the right people, but they can earn up to, you know, 100, 180 pounds uh, for doing those webinars. Um, if you're interested, check out the link below. See what you think. Let us know. Throw your hat in the ring. I'm checking our forum because uh, our members submitted their questions for you for this interview. Um, you already replied to this one. This is similar. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Can a school or an agency refuse my qualification and force me to take their course in order to be considered for their available positions? And also, I have something similar for, for us. Do I need to take your TEFL course in order to be considered for your available positions? You partly responded to, to this question, but I think it's an interesting topic because it happened to me as well. I was working in a university and I wanted to be considered for their TEFL programs. And they told me that they were hiring just people who studied with them. And I understand that point, their point, but at the same time, I don't like it. You know, can an institution refuse to take the qualification that you have? Yes, they can. Uh, and sometimes do because they, particularly if they run their own programs, they do want people that they've pre-vetted. You know, if somebody's done a qualification with you, it's like a very long interview and you know the quality of what you're getting. Um, that said, um, we, for example, at Gallery Teachers are happy to look at whoever's got the right kind of qualifications, which is qualifications that show they can teach and the right kind of experience. Um, again, obviously we, we like working with people that we know so if people have studied with us and we've built a relationship with them, 
then that does help get a foot in the door. But it's no guarantee. And I think that's also true of not having our qualification. If the right person comes through and doesn't have their qualification with us, that's okay. We're happy with that. Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult one because obviously institutions can decide what they want to do and who they want to accept. That's the nature of the job market. It would be lovely if we could insist that they have to take this qualification or that qualification, uh, but we can't. You know, you need people to fill the job and they need to be the right people. So most institutions have guidelines. Most will use them as guidelines and not a strict categorical policy, if that makes sense. Thank you, Tom. It's been uh, really nice to talk to you and I'm looking forward to watch your workshop on uh, garyfishers.com. That's all for today. If you have something important to tell to the TAFL community, uh, you want to write an article for our website or you want to get interviewed for uh, this channel, please write at us at editorial at gallerytishers.com and we will get back to you. If you are watching us on YouTube, and especially if it's the first time that you are with us, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, like, comment, and everything that can help us to uh, grow as a community. Thank you for watching us and until next time, happy teaching and happy learning.